They'll get some of that hard limestone in their beaks. They'll use it, they'll grind it up to a nice fine white paste. They process it through their bodies, and what comes out the other end is that fine white sand. So if you're looking over the tops of the corals and you're seeing a lot of that sand on the top of the coral, that's because of those parrotfish. Now you'll see the checkerboard pattern ones, those are the those are the uh, female stoplight pair of fish. The males will actually have a nice bright orange and yellow spot on their tail. It's a bunch of good school fish. There's much more of those grunts down there, real close to the sandy bottom. Now a lot of those soft corals, the long flat ones, those are our sea fans. We also have the sea wit, sea fingers, sea feathers, and this bright white coral right here. You'll see some of it's that bright white color and some of it looks like a rusty color. Unfortunately, that's our fire coral. And the fire coral is really good coral out here. It helps build everything that you're seeing. Unfortunately, if you've ever been stung by a jellyfish and you know how painful that can be, the fire coral can also sting you. And when the fire coral stings you, it'll, it'll actually last anywhere from two days to two weeks and it can be quite painful. Oh, there's a beautiful green coral coming down this right side right here. That's the great green coral. You can see it. It's got those nice deep grooves in it. So even though this reef is protected, so you're not allowed to touch any of it, you don't want to touch any of the corals to begin with. If you were to touch any of that coral, some of them do have stinging toxins like the fire coral. But others have different bacteria that you've never been introduced to, so you don't want to brush up against that and get any of that bacteria on your skin, because you never know how you're going to react to it. More of our little Sergeant Majors, there's that file fish that you didn't see him in the beginning. That bluish purple one right in the center. He's got that hey, top fin moving back and forth, it's oscillating. Yeah, that's one of the fish that feeds on the jellyfish. Sometimes you'll see one big jellyfish and like three or four of those filefish kind of attacking it, trying to eat off all the tentacles. Once they get all the tentacles off, then they'll start to feed on the rest of it, the nice big portion of it. Lots of these little tiny green patches of coral kind of look like broccoli down there. And then that's our male stoplight pair of fish right there, that bright teal one with the orange and yellow spot. It's going off that left side right there. Kind of a teal color. That's that male stoplight parafish. So the green broccoli patches of coral, that's our mustard hill coral. And then the yellow coral that kind of looks like melted marshmallows on the reef. That's our encrusting star coral. So it should grow in areas that are a little more damaged because that coral is a little bit stronger. It can grow in different areas. The other corals cannot. Now if you look on the bottom right here, we see a lot of what looks like sticks or bones. Now unfortunately that is a lot of our dead staghorn coral, the most endangered coral. Had a disease back in 2006. Oh, some gray snappers right there. Big gray snappers there in the back, right along the bottom. Yeah, some nice big gray snappers. So that staghorn coral caught a disease back in 2006 and it's been suffering ever since. So a lot of that sticks and bones that you see on the bottom is unfortunately that staghorn coral that caught that disease. Now just because it's laying on the bottom there doesn't mean that it's completely useless to the reef system. As we've been looking at everything, the bottom layer of all of these corals started about 20,000 years ago. The third largest barrier reef, the oldest part they found, started about a million years ago. So all of these corals develop on top of all of the dead fossilized coral, and they continue to build on top of it as the corals die off. So all of the fossilized coral that you're seeing will eventually be a foundation for all of the new corals to grow on top of. Oh, it's a nice view of the underside of a jellyfish right there. You see all those, you see all those 
see all those ribbon kind of patterns? Those are the really toxic, stinging parts of the jellyfish. A lot of that fire coral right in here, you can kind of see the bleaching happening on all that fire coral. All that little white, that's unfortunately uh, bleached out coral from uh, the water temperatures being too hot. So if anybody's been out on a hot day, like a 100 degree day, and you've seen how hot you can get, the corals get the exact same way. So more of that elkhorn coral right here, that dark brown one right there in the back. So the corals like the water temperature to stay between about 75 to about 85. If it gets above or below that, it kind of stresses the corals out. They don't like it too much, which is when we see all that bleaching happening. So that bleaching, right now the water temperature is about 86 degrees. With it being 86 degrees, it's kind of on the upper end of what it prefers. And last month, the water temperature was actually up in the 89 degree range. So that's why we've seen a lot of that coral start water temperatures will start dropping off again for the winter and then it can get too far in the opposite direction so if it gets too cold too quickly you'll see a lot of those corals stay bleached or eventually die off now it does take a really long time for these corals to grow just to give you an idea of how long you make a fist and you look at how big that coral would be if if it were to be the size of your fist that'd be about 200 years old so a lot of these corals that you're seeing are a lot older than you are. There's some of that live staghorn coral right here. That light brown spiky one right there in the middle. Going toward the back, going toward the stern. And that's a nice healthy looking staghorn coral in that dark brown color. That's really the color we like to see it. So what they did, since we're not allowed to anchor out here, is they placed these, oh shark! There's a shark here in the, boat, in the front, going off that right side. It's going all the way off that right side over there. Nice shark. Yeah, it's a nice nurse shark. Little baby one. Awesome. Awesome. That was one of our nurse sharks. Whoa, look at that. So our nurse sharks actually feed quite differently from most of the sharks, especially from any of those movies that you guys have seen where the shark bites down on its prey and it shakes its head around and it tears off the meat. Those nurse sharks get their name from the way that they feed. And they feed kind of like a nursing baby. So they'll actually bite down on their food and they'll suck the food off of it rather than tear it. So once those nurse sharks get a hold of their meat, they'll suck on it for quite some time. Their jaw is almost like a vacuum and they'll suck their food off until, until they get it all the way off the bone. Now, because those nurse sharks are so docile, and they usually just lay on the bottom throughout the daytime, they unfortunately do have the most recorded number of bites of all the sharks out here. Now, has everybody seen that really cool movie on YouTube where the diver goes down and he pulls on the tail and he flips him upside down and he can do whatever he wants to the shark? Well, that's not every nurse shark down there. So you want to be very careful. If you are going diving or snorkeling, just leave the sharks alone, let them do their thing, and they're not going to harm you at all. Their teeth are very small. They don't have very big teeth at all. It's just a couple centimeters big. And there's not jagged edges on the sides of it for tearing like most of those sharks. Now, most people do survive from those nurse shark bites because once they realize what they've got a hold of, they'll let go. But sometimes it can take a couple minutes because they've got that nice vacuum seal. But just for your safety, leave those little nurse sharks alone and they're not going to harm you at all. They're used to divers being around here, with this reef being one of the most dived and snorkeled sites in the world. Now you'll see a lot of these soft corals down there being a fuzzy brown color. Now that's the color that they're supposed to be in during the daytime. Because while they're feeding, they'll stick their polyps, which are like little tentacles, out of their structure. And that's how they'll actually feed. They'll grab onto anything moving through the water column. Oh, there's a French angelfish here, the black one with the yellow on the side. Right off to that left side over there. You see him? He's kind of like an all black color. That's a French angelfish. He's got yellow flecks on the side of him. Sorry, Rachel, we're almost out of time. Oh, okay, Captain, thank you. 
Well, unfortunately, guys, we're just about out of time. As we leave the reef, I definitely encourage those of you that want to to continue to stay down and look at the bottom. Oftentimes, as we leave the reef, we see sometimes big sea turtles and the seagrass.